Both camps look confident at the weigh-in, despite Hernandez's trainer Felix Pinter arguing about a half-hour delay. But his fighter was relaxed during the regulation medical. The only pressure he showed was on the doctor's gauge. The 32-year-old Puerto Rican has no outward signs of harm from his 42 fights, in which he's only lost once to a legend of the ring, Julio Cesar Chavez. His lean build a stark contrast to the bulked-up Costa Zoo. The Russian-born boxer looked like a warrior as he underwent the regulation tests. There was no pre-fight one-upmanship at this weigh-in. Hernandez stepped up to the scales and registered 63.7 kilograms, cost you just heavier at 63.7 kilos. I feel good, I feel great and uh, that's a good condition. It's big stakes for both fighters, with the winner likely to fight world champion Jake Rodriguez later in the year. An Australian bantamweight title will also be decided at the Newcastle Entertainment Centre. Johnny Rivera to fight Johnny Binge, who was in doubt after being too heavy at the original weigh-in. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. Current New South Wales Super Sedan champion John Pine continued his winning streak to make him the top driver for the season. And Pine managed to produce some anxious moments for his opposition in taking out all three races on Saturday night. In the leader cars, Richard Myers was taken to hospital with suspected chest injuries after he rolled his car and was slammed into by another. Mick Turner totaled his car after clipping a wheel in the modified rods, sending him into a spectacular rollover to end up against the concrete wall but he managed to walk away from the incident. Next Saturday night, the Motodrome winds up the season with Australia's richest demolition derby. In his teens, bodybuilder Chris Sharp was taking large amounts of animal steroids to build up his body weight and strength. Last month, the Cardiff football player, who had hoped to play gridiron in the United States, pleaded guilty to stealing animal steroids at gunpoint from a veterinary supplier in Sydney. Today, he joined friends playing pool after he was sentenced to three years of weekend detention, a much lighter sentence than his accomplice, who went to jail for a year. Sharp told the court that he no longer uses steroids and that to repay his debt to society, he'd voluntarily done about eight months of community service. Judge Cowland gave his reason for not sending Sharp to jail. You've been given credit, Mr Sharp, for exceptional performance in rehabilitation. Christian Sharp wouldn't be interviewed on camera, but he did tell me he believes people who take steroids should be under medical supervision. It's a view shared by sports medicine doctor Phil Fury. He's seen many bodybuilders and athletes using steroids meant for animals because doctors can't prescribe them with human steroids. These fellows have been forced into the veterinarian market and they've been, uh, been obtaining drugs on, from the black market, which are mainly veterinarian. Dr Fury says taking animal steroids can cause side effects, including making a person more aggressive. He wants doctors to be allowed to prescribe and supervise the use of these drugs. Jane Anderson, NBN News.
men from the Salvation Army hostel at Morisset are in hospital tonight after a piece of metal piping they were carrying hit high voltage power lines. The Westpac rescue helicopter was called in to fly farm supervisor Peter Davy to Royal North Shore Hospital where he remains in a stable condition. The Knights met their new teammates today at the team physical in Sydney. Paul Harrigan back in the starting lineup, along with Robbie McCormack. Mark Sargent will sit on the bench with teammate Mark Glanville by his side. Rep honours have eluded Glanville since he was hauled off the field just 20 minutes into the city country game two years ago. Twenty-two-year-old Matthew Johns doesn't know whether to laugh or cry over his selection. The young 5'8 is only in his first season as a regular first grader, but a knee injury could force him out of his most important game to date. I'd be as happy as Larry if I could get rid of this uh, leg, and, but I don't think there's any players around that's going to lend me one. <laughs> Johns has been given two extra days to pass the physical. The selection of five nights is a fitting reward for the club after three convincing wins in a row. Yesterday's 24 points to 20 win over the previously undefeated North Sydney has given the team inspiration for its premiership chances and hope for its players in a tour year. Obviously there's a state of origin and um, you know kangaroo tour at the end of the year so um, but it, you know if I, if I can play well and, and the form's good enough and the side's going well then I might be a chance for, for later on in the year. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. This is our community service project to be run in conjunction with the Smith family. The idea is that we collect blankets and warm clothing for the needy and homeless of the hunter. During the month of May, Newcastle's 257 bus drivers are calling on commuters to help support their blanket appeal. All the drivers within Newcastle, that's Belmont and Hamilton, will be more than happy to accept blankets and warm clothing from all the public. They can also drop them into any of the depots. At the end of the month, the items will be gathered and delivered to the Smith family. The organisation says it already has thousands of needy people on its books this winter, at least 1,500 more compared to last year. With the unemployment the way it is, people can't afford the extra little benefits they could get to keep warm and that. And uh, the homeless, well, I think it's a great idea, tops. Uh, it's going to be a very cold winter and there's a lot of people out there that will need um, to keep warm, need blankets and there's a lot of... Um, good people in Newcastle and I'm sure will come forward and give us the blankets and then we'll hand them on to the Smith family. Melinda Smith, NBN News. It took just minutes for the men to smash their way into the club at around one o'clock Monday morning. They had stockings over their heads, but their brazen attack was captured on numerous security videos inside the club. Once in the main poker machine lounge, the men set about destroying the money bins of numerous machines. We believe that they were using hammers from what we can see from the security camera. 
The half a dozen poker machines which were damaged in the attack contained the night's takings in one dollar coins. The men can be seen filling up large containers of money. In the last six months, there have been numerous similar attacks on registered clubs in the region. Police believe they're connected. We believe that these persons may be able to assist us in our inquiries with those robberies as well. Senior Constable Neville Reid of Mayfield Detectives hopes someone may recognise the men or have knowledge of an unusually large amount of $1 coins being cashed in. Jody McKay, NBN News. Think EAR. One breath every four seconds. Ready? Go. Kevin Laffey from the Royal Life Saving Society travels the country giving pointers on cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Three, four, now I can five, correct him, six, make him more efficient. Seven, nine. His class at Mount View High today included nearly 70 teachers. The Education Department has made it compulsory for any teacher involved with school excursions to learn CPR. When you think of the numbers of people that, that uh, teachers come in contact with every day, kiddies get hurt at cricket or football or whatever, that's all you know, occasion for CPR or first aid anyhow. Meanwhile, the Coalfields Healthy Heartbeat Unit is helping shoppers to think more about the foods they eat. The skim milk is very similar to the shape milk. Yeah. Yeah, the shape milk there, the one... In the Coalfields, the, um, the rate of death from heart disease is around about 30% of deaths, which is probably about 20% higher than the Australian average. Health tours will continue this week at the Cessnock Shopping Plaza and a special public meeting tonight is aimed at reducing the area's alarming rate of heart disease before the year 2000. The Williamtown Air Base was a sea of light blue this morning as number 81 wing celebrated its historic milestone. The wing was established in 1944 as the flying element of the RAF's technical fighter group. It's twice been disbanded but still maintains a proud flying history in war and peace. Since then, thousands of men and women have passed through its ranks, some of the originals at Williamtown today. 69-year-old Fred Barnes joined the 81 wing during World War II. For him, the reunion was a chance to meet old friends and remember the good times. They're always stirring events, uh, old comrades, old times, even watching the troops march by can give you a bit of a pang. The day also marked a historic change for the wing, with most of its squadrons to be deployed further north.
The boys from the bush are back in town. The country rep players had two runs in the rain today, ready for the clash with City at Marathon Stadium. Coach Anderson is pleased to be in Newcastle. Usually when he comes with Canterbury, he gets a less than welcome reception. Yeah, it's good to come here and uh, be the home side and have the fans behind us for a change. We certainly normally cop a hiding when we come up here from the fans anyway. All the country boys are injury free. Matthew John's bad luck in missing out with leg problems isn't seen as a blow to Anderson, with Laurie Daly moving into 5-8. I think he's the best 5-8 in Australia, so obviously it'll make a hell of a difference for us. Uh, although the young bloke would have done well, I was quite happy to have him there. Late replacement John Simons has slipped into the team without too much trouble. He may get onto the paddock early with fitness question marks over Daly and Stewart who haven't played a lot of football lately. Conditions were too wet for Phil Gould City reps this afternoon. They've been resting here at the team hotel, not taking too many chances before tomorrow night's big clash. Peter Ryan, NBN News. If you're one of those people who don't like those flash European cars, this is the story for you. This BMW has been entered in Saturday night's demolition derby at the Motodrome. The Yuppie Mobile, complete with mobile phone and snow skis, will take on 70 other cars in a fight to the finish. And cars like this don't come cheap. Restored, a good one is worth six to ten. Thousand dollars. Yes, yes, thousand dollars. While the yuppies may be choking on their nouveau cuisine at even the thought of damaging this saloon, George Jones says he's in it just for the fun. It's my car, I want to destroy it. <laughs> but I'm doing it for the benefit of Newcastle. Everybody's going to derive some pleasure from it. Newcastle woman Jill Bladen is among hundreds of people still searching for the truth of what happened to relatives and loved ones consigned to Japanese prison camps during World War II. A scribbled signature on a souvenir Bon Voyage menu led Jill to the chance discovery of her dad's best mate after 50 years. Jill's father, Sergeant Bob Brown and Bluey Walton, were both taken prisoner by the Japanese at the fall of Singapore. Bluey was sent to the infamous Burma Railway, Bob Brown perished along with nearly 1,800 others on a death march from Sandakan Prison Camp in Borneo. 50 years on, why is it so important for you to be getting the pieces back together now? Well, I think a lot of it was we were never told anything about our dad that much. The just that he died a prisoner of war and I was only nine then. And uh, then the next thing you knew that people just say, oh, well, isn't it a shame a dad died a prisoner of war? And you never heard no more. Memorials to the Aussie POWs who died in Burma will be constructed in Tamworth and Newcastle from where many of the soldiers enlisted. Last year, more than six out of every thousand cars in Newcastle had valuables stolen. That's up by two and a half cars per thousand on the 1991 average. That's nearly a 50% rise for the city in two years. 
thieves target vehicles on the street and in car parks. But the worst place to park your car is at any one of Newcastle's beaches. As people relax on the sand or in the surf, thieves are having a picnic in the car park. Police say too many people leave wallets or purses under the car seat before they go to the beach, making themselves easy targets for thieves. Drivers are advised to lock their vehicles and keep valuables out of sight. Cars are more likely to be robbed on Fridays and least likely to be broken into on Sundays. Despite the increase in thefts, Newcastle is still better than most cities. Sydney is the worst with 34 cars in every thousand burgled. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. Within the first five minutes, McVeigh pushed off some feeble defence to score, then Brasher put Russell in for a try and the Knights were down 8-0. If that wasn't a big enough problem, Tony Butterfield got a little frustrated and was sent off and the Knights were down to 12 men. Just before half-time, Will Robinson got a lucky bounce and the Tigers led 16 points to 2. After the break, the Knights fought back. A miracle pass from Ainsco gave Godden a sprint to the line and the Knights went in again. Andrew Johns matching up with Ainsco, who pushed his way through 16 points to 10. The Tigers weren't finished yet. Gillette was too sharp for the defence, but again Newcastle came back with Robbie Ross running in a four-pointer, giving the Knights another chance and then another try to make it a real nail-biter. Russell Wire picked up a cross-kick and it was 20-all. More drama, Balmain's Carroll was sent off for a high tackle. The Knights kicked a penalty and a two-point lead. But a Tigers try in the dying moments gave them the lead and the game, 26 points to 22. Peter Ryan, NBN News. Woodbury's Renee Tolhurst became the region's newest mum on this day that celebrates motherhood. Little Brittany Louise came into this world just after 2.30 this morning, weighing just under four kilograms. I still can't believe it, I'm a mum though. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's fantastic. At Newcastle's John Hunter Hospital, a reunion of five generations of the one family after the birth of Ellie Jane. Ellie is the daughter to Melanie, granddaughter to Gay, great-granddaughter to Judy, and wait for it, great-great-granddaughter of 85-year-old Elsie. Really wonderful. That it was the best Mother's Day present I think I've had for a long, long time. And we'll have more on our mums later in the news. It was one of the worst weekends ambulance workers have ever experienced. More than 50 people across the state were taken to hospital with injuries ranging from a corked thigh to serious spinal problems. One of the most tragic cases occurred during a rugby league match at Old Bar near Taree. A scrum collapsed on a 16-year-old and he was flown by the Westpac Rescue Helicopter to the Royal North Shore Hospital in Sydney. Well, a, a scrum collapsed and that's usually the scenario we see with these very serious spinal injuries and indeed on this occasion the young lad is paraplegic. It's an all too common job for ambulance workers. Their weekend work is almost entirely devoted to attending sports injuries. 
Some say enforcement of rules is the answer to preventing injuries, while others think players should start wearing helmets and padding. Helmets have been discussed. I'm not sure that they're exactly the answer, but indeed uh, probably education is, is going to be the way about it. Butterfield will face a judiciary for this incident in the 19th minute where he allegedly kneed Balmain centre Tim Brasher. Knight's coach David Waite will travel to Sydney to represent the 28-year-old tonight. He was keeping his case for the second rower mum today but was full of praise for his team's effort at Leichhardt Oval. But their form has been good. You know, we have to consistently put that form out every week though. With just 12 players for most of the match, the Knights managed to lead by 22 points to 20 with five minutes to go. But a Balmain try in the dying minutes clinched it for the Tigers. Obviously from the coach's point of view, it's, it's really disappointing when you see those qualities that you, you hope you've got in your football team. And this football team has had since day one, since our inception. So, uh, And you ask for those things to be displayed in those sorts of circumstances. And, and to a man, they did that. So it, it really disappointing from the coach's point of view. But the also facing the judiciary tonight is Balmain lock Bernard Carroll for an alleged high tackle on Knights halfback Andrew Johns. Jason Neuenhoff, NBN News. The 16-year-old rising star was on familiar ground today, training at Edgeworth Athletic Field. She will make the most important step in her career next month when she travels with the Australian junior team to England and Europe. It will be a whirlwind five-week tour where the youngster will compete in ten different competitions. The British Triple A's, um, the national titles over in Britain and uh, <laughs> yeah, and a uh, competition against the Ukraine and the island. The sport of hammer throwing was exclusive to men until women started to give it a go about 10 years ago. There is only a male division for hammer throwing at the Olympics, but Karen hopes it will be different by the time the Olympics hit Sydney in the year 2000. Hopefully we'll get introduced really soon. Meantime, Karen will keep looking for a sponsor to help with the $4,500 cost of travelling overseas and maybe one who will support her throughout her career and catapult her into Olympic glory. Jason Neuenhoff, NBN News. After last night's budget announcement, it seems more likely that Newcastle will win the Navy's billion dollar contract to build mine hunters. Enough money has been set aside in the expenditure part of the defence budget to guarantee that the mine hunters are going to be built this year. Federal member Bob Horne says that's good news for the hunter. Three preferred tenderers have all indicated that the hunter is their number one choice to build the uh, mine hunters in. The winning bid should be known as early as next month. Health has also received a boost with $209 million to be spent over four years on breast cancer. The Mater Hospital has welcomed the allocation of extra funds to fight breast cancer. Dr Don Jackson says more money will mean more women can be screened for the condition. We do not have the facilities at the moment to screen more women. Uh, we will require more screening centres uh, and to back this up, uh, a more adequate assessment centre. Extra funding for mental health will mean more community-based services in the region. On the science front, a Hunter Valley company, APACE Research, will receive $2 million to research and develop an alternative fuel source based on ethanol. Even though there will be no new taxes introduced, the Chamber of Commerce says both individuals and companies will foot the bill for additional spending.
You'll pay for it in bracket creep. The tax cuts that were supposed to be coming through now are not coming through and they're not coming through in the next four years. So if your tax goes up, you pay a higher proportion on the extra dollar you get, we're all going to pay some part of that. Jane Anderson, NBN News. Today's summit brought together representatives from the Australian Conservation Foundation, the Coalition Against Ocean Outfalls, the Surfrider Foundation and state MPs. It follows a Commission of Inquiry recommendation to proceed with the Look At Me Now outfall. But both politicians attending weren't optimistic about its future. It's my belief that they do, if they push ahead with this ocean outfall, that Andrew Fraser will be toppled and that might just end the Fay government. If the Department of Public Works and the Fay government choose to build this outfall, there's going to be an awful waste of money because once we get into government, we're going to make sure it doesn't uh, go ahead. They're not the only threats that were issued. If any work proceeds on Look At Me Now Headland, that it will be met with fairly significant uh, direct action. I mean, we're not talking about um, some sort of fictitious environmental green extreme group that's planting bombs. We're talking about cross-section middle Australia. It's that cross-section of the community that's now awaiting a response to the summit. Just when planning minister Robert Webster will make a final decision about the outfall is unknown. <laughs>